We might, we might just need to make sure our insurance covers this yeah. for that. I, yeah. the toilet block. I think at the moment, I think our insurance yeah. cover will be very really highly doubtful at the right. moment um, because I wouldn't be able to answer the questions that they're actually right. asking. Um, so I think we need to have a look at that. I think mm. yes, it's something we need to have a priority for I'll that. Put it on the agenda, that. Yeah. 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 As a special you know, matter of consideration yeah. item. Mm. Okay. You could take John. Thanks. The next item, I think we've mostly covered. That's police, crime, speed watch, yeah. and SID updates. Yeah. Yeah. And then we go on to Clark's matters. Yeah, just just one thing. Uh, um, I know most of you have seen the email that I think David sent out regarding uh, to Brent Street and the progress that was being made. I think Colm wrote to us. Um, and I think, David, you responded as much as you'd had a chat with the foreman and, um, and he had explained about some of the issues and the problems that will arise there. I don't know whether you had a copy of his reply. He actually wrote back and uh, his reply to the issues that we raised mm -hmm. were... Um, and I'll, I'll read exactly his email because I'm, you know, I'm not... No, I have I'm it. drafting this email. No, he says, Dear Colin, if anything it sounds like a game of postman's knock. This is Colin, he's writing to Colin Townsend. Um, we call him residential are developer and contractor and we have a site manager on site and no foreman. He informs me he has made no such stated comments to anybody and there is no other contractor on site other than our groundwork subcontractor. We have experienced some delays due to deliveries of some materials, not, not due to unexpected surface water, and all of the engineering works below ground have been installed successfully. I wouldn't like to speculate where any of this, and this is his words, misinformation has originated, but it has certainly not come from us. So that was his response to your, you know, right, rightly you were concerned because you obviously had got your information from somewhere and obviously he just simply responded to it. I understand. I got the information from um a geographically very close source, and that very same source mentioned to me this morning, because I, I said, you know, how, how are things going now? Are things happier over there? And was told, well, ye yes, they are. Um, a lot of the problem had been apparently to do with surface water and um, you know, <clears throat> the nature of the land there <clears throat> to cope with it. Um, I was told that the the special pumps that they installed uh, have been running pretty much permanently, constantly for the last period because we've had a, you know, an extended period of massively heavy rain, um, and we, we, it was finally turned off this morning. Mm. So clearly, I mean that kit isn't going to be there once the development no. is completed. But one has to hope and assume that what they've installed by way of surface water um, removal. And where they pump in the water? So sorry. Where were they pumping the water? Straight into the ring next to the A38. Was there to put it in there? Which then flows around the corner and is supposed to flow up Brand yeah. Street. Yeah. That ring. I think the best best way to, to deal with Roger, because Roger Brennan obviously going, is going to email us regularly on progress. And who's Roger? Roger Brennan is Calm Developments. He's the um, well, effectively the owner of Calm Developments. Okay. He's what, the, the bloke that came here? Yeah, that's right. right. He, I think he did come here on one occasion. Um, so he's obviously the only overall control of the development. But he's decided now he's going to update on a regular basis. Good. And obviously, I'll make sure that you receive his updates. And then if we've got any response to his updates, if it comes back through me, then I'll send him the reply from the council. So if you say to me, well, actually, I don't agree with Colin or Roger Brennan, let me have the, your concerns, and I will forward that back to him and say, look, actually, this is this is the response to your your updates. And Just, why am I going to be included in those emails? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's no reason. Well, there's no reason why it shouldn't be because it's. I don't see it. So, I mean, he's he's simply updating the situation as it is. He's not, you know, he's not. I have no idea the, there was any pumps going on. To um, be honest. Um, and and I was under the impression that when they were. Um, trying to sell the idea of number two Brent Street was that it was the driest field in the village. Mm -hmm. So where all this surface water has come from? I mean, as far as as far as no, from from yeah. above. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as far as calm development is concerned, I mean, they're they're updating should 
really be, I suppose, available to everybody. Everybody. Yeah. In the village, really. It's not, it's not a no secret. Yeah. It's a secret. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if he has something to say yeah. that he thinks is worth saying, then he simply yeah. sends it to me. Yeah. And then I'm happy yeah. to send it out to everybody yeah. who's got emails. Yeah. Necessary. Um, and then if there's no agreement, because somebody says, well, that's a lot of rubbish, because that, that is not like that, come back with some evidence, and I'll go back to him and say, well, actually, yeah. we, we don't agree with your update. Um, for the following reasons. I think the most important thing is that we give evidence. Uh, you know, we've always got to provide, if, he, if we go back to him and say that we don't actually agree with your update, mm. then we need to give him evidence as to why we think that is the case. Because otherwise it's just hearsay. So, um, but I just raised it because I, did, I didn't think it would have seen the reply back from... No, we haven't. While we're discussing Con, um, I would just like to ask um, Bob a uh, question. Um, there appears to be a bund built parallel with the A38. Um, in the neighbouring field? In that field, yes. Got it. okay. It's basically the topsoil that's come off the, off the site that they're working on. And they will be using a lot of that to go back onto their site anyway. It was, in effect, what they did was they moved all the topsoil off from the from the one field, rather than taking it away by lorry and then bringing it back by lorry, they're storing it on the next door field to use it, and then they'll take away what if they don't use. Yeah, right. So that's not permanent. No, they've got. To, they'll have to return that field back to as so it was. It was right. Thank you. Right. Item six correspondence. Well, there wasn't very much. You've seen the letter that the resident sent us regarding the water yes. in Brent Street. And we've also had, I haven't brought it on, it's very simple really, we've had a, uh, a grant request uh, for uh, amended community transport, which we do get from time to time. And uh, we, I usually go back to them and say, that, okay, um, if you require some funding from us, can you tell us how many people have used it? Now, because I've always tried to get specifics. They can't give you specifics, but they can give you a general idea of who's used the service. And then on that basis, we can decide in January when we come to grants whether we think it's worth uh, you know, giving them a grant or not. Because um, I haven't actually had any grant um, requests. It's only just gone. It's only just gone. Oh, yeah. It's been early days. Yeah. Uh, so that's the only correspondence other than. You haven't had any grant requests? I've had one from Nigel. From yeah, that's, that's, so that's on file, which, yeah, we, that's which we discussed before. And that will obviously be put in the mix with all the others. Yeah. Um, I thought we'd, we'd have one. Just, just that one and yeah. amended and, and CAB, of course, yeah. which we always have. Um, and the only, the the only, only the criteria for, for grants is if it's a village group, is that the council ought to be asking questions as you know, who the village group are, what they do, how long they've been formed. Because obviously it's what they call a section 137 grant, which obviously requires the council to only give grants to community-based projects, because it's taxpayers' money, effectively. Yeah. But providing they can provide that, that's fine. There's yeah. no problem. Yeah. Mm. The next item is finance and to approve payments. Right. The, the payments are the statutory payments for December 1574. That's the usual HMRC, payroll, uh, JP Mayo, it's the last, the last one for JP, no, the last one's January for JP Mayo, and GB Sports, um, and 1574, so that's in line with where it should be uh, for, the, for that month. And then there are two additional payments, one to area and signs for the signage for Battle Royale Lane, that's what John was in, that was the Battle Royale Lane signage, 50 pounds for Correct, that. that's to diversion of the funds. They just missed last month's agenda, so we weren't able to pay. And, and Colin, unfortunately, has no declaring interest, he's not here, for the wreath for the uh, remembrance of Sunday commemoration. So um, they are the, the actual payments um, for this month. Can I have a proposal that we accept those payments? Yeah. Thank you. Now, final agreement on the budget. Now, we had a. I forgot on my three set papers. Right, okay. I've got some more. Oh, great. That's great. I think that one should do. Thank you.
Okay, I'm all right. Yeah, the precept um, thing we had a look at in the last <coughs> month, and there were a few, um, there were a few errors in it. More, more, I think, not in terms of amounts, but in terms of calculations. So what we see now is effectively um, the, the new sheets. Um, and what you've got is a budget which was for this year of forty thousand one hundred and ninety. Actual to date, and that's actually up to November, not December, 27,497. And I forecast, and it's only a forecast is a stab in the dark to some extent, because we don't know when any, what payments might come in during January, February, March, of 38,139. We won't be very, very far off that. Um, with a, an initial proposal, because obviously you have to start somewhere, of 34,945, the budget. Now, the first thing to say is that the budget is the first, the first part of the precept setting. So, I guess you need to make any comments that you wish to make on the budget, first of all. Is there any changes you wish to make? Whether you think anything has been overcooked, whether you think anything's undercooked, whether there's anything you feel you want to spend more of, less of. Um, we did reduce the um, special projects to 5,000. It was originally there 10 when we first set it. It's down to 5 because I think 10 was a bit high, bearing in mind we didn't actually know of anything in the, in the, on the horizon, so to speak. So it's set at 5. Um, uh, so you, the, most, the most variable part of this budget is the second category, which is village costs. Most of the first category can be reasonably well determined because of things like subscriptions, audit fees, uh, website management, insurance, um, and training fees. They can be reasonably well assessed. When we do these training courses with Setmore, yeah. no charge. There, there's no charge? No. Okay. The only training we pay for is SELC. And even then, not always. Right. Because we are members of SELC. Uh -huh. So they sometimes give us a subsidised training fee right. for any of their courses. Um, but no, Setmore we don't, we don't pay any for. Um, and uh, so that's, you know, that, that's really the area, that second category, where you're going to get most of the variance. But where you're going to perhaps want to add some spending into um, it. Yeah. What is the, um, the special projects? <laughs> what, 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 what's on the list for that at the moment? Possibly. Well, the, only, the only thing I could, I could foresee was Possibly something to do with the fencing on the village green. Well, yeah, I mean, we'd be looking um, at sort of three, three grand or more. Yeah. Um, on, on the latest uh, quote, but I'll talk about that when we get there. But it doesn't actually necessarily include any specific item, it just gives us some f flexibility as we go through the year. Invariably, something crops up yeah. which is not within our ordinary budgets. So that 5,000 really is there for anything that we, we deem to be a special project. Because bear in mind, next year as well, we will probably get some sewer payments, and they may cover some community projects. Right. Um, how do you feel it's going compared to the last, say, two or three years? Pretty level, actually. Pretty level. And we've had some quite big items of expenditure. Yeah. Um, but, you know, our budget... We seem to be able to hit budgets quite well, actually. Mm. Over the last three years, we haven't had any major ups or downs from the budgets we set. Great touch wood. Which you <laughs> wish. Um, I don't know whether that's luck, judgment, or good calculation by the council, or whatever it is. Well, it seems to work. We use evenly stored gas canisters in the public toilets. That might all get well. We might do that in But it does seem to work. Um, I mean, different, there is no set formula for setting no. budgets. Um, you know, I changed it quite radically when, when I took over from Michael. Uh, and I tried to make it a bit more user-friendly if I could. And it seems to have worked over the years. Um, and there's nothing there that seems to sort of shout at you and say, oh, God, that looks a bit, a bit out of kilter. Yeah, um, the only thing, forgive me, that, that looks a tad, potentially a tad low, given earlier discussion is, is play facilities with a budget of only a thousand pounds if we're talking about the kind of purchases that Brian's yeah. exploring that, that seems potentially pretty low isn't it? Yeah. 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 But of course it could come out of the seal payments. We would also go for grants. The grants as well. Right. Um, 
I mean, we're expecting to get about another 24,000 from SIL um, next year from, from the community infrastructure levy because of the building that's going on in our village. We will get some community benefit from that. Um, and that obviously would, would cover things like play equipment because it is a community benefit. Um, that's right, Bob. Mm -hmm. it, would, it would definitely cover that. Are there any time limits on the cell phone? Spending? Thank you. Ten years. Ten years. Ten years. Ten years. Ten years. And of course, the, the £24,000 that we are expected to get is in addition to the bit that we could get from Station Road. Station Road won't generate as much because the affordable housing element is a greater element of the project. So we, and we don't get seal payments on, on affordable. So it's only the open market housing where we get the, 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 the seal payments. So we could, you know, we could easily end up with 30, 30 plus next year, quite easily. So that would cover some of this, what you're talking about, David, which is the, you know, the play equipment uh, could do. Um, and we also have £5,000 in there for contingency, plus a thousand we've got in for play equipment, and we've got a maintenance budget. So there's, there's quite a bit in there that could cover. You know, it just seemed that, that this yeah. is a year when, a bit low. with, with yeah. the new fencing in the village green and mm. yeah. potentially the play equipment, we, yeah. we could be looking at some serious expenditures coming yeah. here. Good. Uh, and, and, and that's you know, a fair point to raise, really. I mean, yeah, what, uh, if we did talk about the green, yeah. um, potentially what would happen to that fence and the green and any necessary work to make all that good? Where would that come from? Would that be from special projects? Or I would, would say it come from special projects. Earmark money you'll notice, for that project. You'll notice if you look at the actual budget, um, 27.497, you'll see there's a fair chunk up to forecast stage, which is end of March. And I've allowed for some of, some of that spending into this year's, into this year's budget. Mm. So, because I think some of it will be done before the end of the financial year. So some of that, what was it, 11,000 ish? Some of that 11,000 will cover items that we decide to cover in this year's budget. Um, so some of it will already be paid for. Hmm. But there will be some, you're right, right, there will be some that possibly have to come out of either um, special projects or other monies. Yes, but. And also, ultimately, we're sitting on £26,000 worth of reserves. So if we yes. needed to dip into that, yeah. we can do that this year and then. And then take a couple of years to replace it. So. Yeah. And if you look at the second sheet, if you, one assumes that the budget looks about right as far as you're concerned, that, that does equate. If we decide to go for a, a, a nine month reserve figure, um, that does equate to a precept. If you go down the, go down the sheet there, the first section is, the section is I'll take what precept we've had this year, what our still contributions have been, what the VAT reclaim is likely to be at the end of the year, inward grants, um, and I, I mentioned Cottage Hill because some two years ago we agreed to, to approach the company who'd done the solar farm at um, Wick Lane and ask for grants, which we knew would be available if we asked, and we did ask, and they agreed to pay us £2,000 each year for five years. I discovered back in September that they hadn't paid this year, and I went back to them, and the company had been taken over. So I had a fair old deba debate with the new company because they knew nothing about it. Eventually, we got them to agree uh, to pay the £2,000, which they'd already previously agreed by the previous company. So they are now prepared to commit to that. So we had effectively another two more payments on the issue. Um, so, um, and then obviously we can forecast fairly accurately the you know, salaries, tax, administration, village expenditure. So the, the, because they're all coming out of the budget figure on the other page. Um, forecast reserves are the reserves I expect there to be come the end of March. Um, and then I deduct the specific reserves, things that we can't really touch um, for any other project. Now specific reserves are Clark's Maturity Fund, which is paid into you know, a fund every year, so, you know, yours truly, OJC Pension Fund, <laughs> if you like, or we'll something else. Um, Brentnow Election Fund, well, of course, that has dropped 
a bit from where it was last year because we had an election this year. So therefore, our fund will continue to be topped up at the rate of £250 a year. Um, Wick Sober Farm um, is the community fund that we get from the Sober Farm budget, which can only be used for a community payment. So that's effectively a fixed reserve. And the Silver Grant funding, which we've had this year, 6,000 plus, which again can only be used for certain things. It's not available to us for running the, the council. It's only available for us for a community project. Capital rather than revenue. Exactly. And we could, you know, we, you can, we can change the definitions of all these things and, you know, but that's, that's, what, that's what it is, effectively. And if we take all that into account, and we want to keep ourselves a reasonable level of reserves, the estimate for the precept should be at 32,998, which is... A little bit, a little bit up on last year. Um, that's right. It's a little bit up on last year. It's a little bit down last year. A little bit down. Because of this, it was thirty-three five hundred. Yeah, of course we had the, the community grant because I keep yeah. forgetting the community grant. We get a community grant, not a community grant. It, it was a. Yeah, it was these grants work. It was a grant that came in, which was set by the government, wasn't it, about five years ago, and Sedgemore been paying it back to us in bits for the last. That's now no longer available to us. So the precept we've set now is actually a pure precept uh, of, of 32, 33,000, if you like. And they're about, about the same as previous year. So no real increase. And you could argue that with the reserves we have, there's probably no justification for an increase unless we have a major project that we want to cough up with. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are at the moment. So we need to decide as a council whether we think that's a reasonable precept. Are you happy with that? Whether you'd like a bit more? And if so, how are we going to arrive at that calculation? Because we have to have a calculation for it. You know, it's not a finger in the air job, um, which I'm sure some some parish councils do do actually. But uh, I'm not mentioning any names, but you know, that's how some do their budgets. When do we have to decide by? Well, I do always decide in December because Tanya at Sedgemoor well, likes to have the figures in by the second week in January. So we've still got, and if you want to defer until January, we've still got a few days after the next meeting to get it in, if we feel that's what we would like to have another think about it. But I mean, so, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, but, I mean it's taken us through it, it seems, mm -hmm. seems reasonable to me, and I'm happy to propose that we go for a 33,000 precept, which is rather than have the old... We don't know what guess. Yeah, yeah. 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 I second that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So is it your wish then that we agree on the thirty-three thousand? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. I will send that to Tanya before Christmas. Should we like to get to <coughs> before Christmas? I'm sure. Thank you for your hard work, though. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, I, you know, it's almost a bit of a mystery really, in the precept. Uh, a lot of a lot of councils, it's, it, it, is a, it is a mystery to them how it's calculated, but it's, okay. it's quite straightforward actually when you start getting into it. Um, so that's basically that. Um, edge. edge. We mentioned last month about getting some more professional software for council financing because at the moment we use spreadsheets, which okay, they do a reasonable job, but they don't give us the detail that really I would like to see. And the only way to achieve that is to look at recognised council software. I don't know whether Andrew or Boric, I know you were perhaps can have a little look on the website. Did you, did you get a chance to look at it? Yeah, I looked at it. My only thing to the thing is it's not clothing, Owen. It's not what? It's but software, not software. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I always made a mistake whenever I write it. All the time. Spell it software. software. Brian, you can pick Brian, up that piece. Oh, yeah. so we normally rely on you. Brian, Brian, yes, you're my uh, mentor in these regards. Really lose it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, these com this company, there's about only about three companies that write specifically for parish yeah. councils. Um, RBS, which is the one that Burnham Town Council use, which is good software, but it's about twice the price of Edge. Actually, I'm not even sure it does quite as good a job, actually, having looked at it. Um, but Edge... I've been around for about 10 years. I've spoken to, what, four councils who use it now. Actually, they didn't. none of the councils in this area use it, but I've spoken to one or two others around a couple in Devon, one in Cornwall, 
Um, well, it's near Bristol. You'll use it. And um, yeah, yeah. in three cases out of the four, they come across from RBS to this because mm. they felt it delivered um, a, a less expensive um, piece of software. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't intend to use this until um, March, April, yeah. in new, new financial year. But obviously in January, February, I really ought to get an approval from the council yeah. to go ahead with it because of <coughs> the costs involved. There's also another part to it, which is of course the training, the planning. There's the planning as well. They will do, we don't have to have the planning bit, we just have the finance bit. But they do a planning bit as well, which is, can be quite useful because what it does, it keeps a complete database of all your planning applications by number, uh, cross-referenced, to your mi minutes and so forth. So if somebody, if I have my computer in front of me and somebody said, when did we last talk about this particular planning application? I can look at it and just I can find it immediately. So it has some benefits, but it's another cost and one has to be mindful of costs uh, to, to the council. But the finance one, which is set up and configurate, configuration and the email, because bear in mind it's an online facility. So in other words, we don't hold it, it, we it's upload everything and download everything. Yeah. It's a portal. Yeah, and I can go straight into it from any computer anywhere and download all the documents. I don't need to have my computer necessarily use somebody else's if I have the passwords. So they're charging about um, 160 for that and then there's about another 400 or so for training. So, you know, the setup costs are a little bit on the high side in a way. Um, but the actual annual costs are about £200 plus VAT. Um, that's the ongoing cost, as it were. And you've already included that in, in the, um, the budget for the coming year? Well, I, I haven't because I haven't had it. it, it could, you, you could argue it would come from, again, it could come from either contingency or special projects. So? We could not so what's the global figure? Sorry? What's the global figure? Well, so 560 quid is yeah. the upfront mm -hmm. cost to set yeah. it up and 200 quid a year in licensing. Yeah, mm -hmm. basically. Um, I won't ask the council to, to agree necessarily at this meeting, but I think in January we ought to think about getting an agreement. If there's any more information you want, uh, I can certainly, or if you want to have a look on it yourself and see what. Because the other thing is that doing it this way, if you wanted to go into our financials, the things that I normally use on my own spreadsheets, you could do so. So if you have a password, it doesn't have to stop you going into it and having a look at it. You can't change anything. But if you had, you might have a little bit of concern, you might want to ask a question, go in and find out. It'll tell you. And, um, and so uh, we could have somebody else as well that could change things. So I come back to the proverbial bus. If I fall under a bus, it would be useful for somebody else to be able to go in and carry on. Is that 400 quid? That's training for yourself, but you know we've got the financial group yeah. as part of Paris yeah. Council. Maybe some of those yeah. could go on the training yeah. course. Yeah. yeah. Whether it's an online training, I'm not quite sure how it is actually. I'm not sure how they do it. But I'll find out before, uh, before January and we'll find out whether it's worth somebody else. <laughs> Going into it as well. <laughs> the smiling. Bob, could, could you just clarify one thing in terms of the ongoing license? Hmm. Is that 200 quid subsequent years or is that? Subsequent years. Mm -hmm. So the first year is included in the upfront costs? And I, be I believe so. I will check that. I believe okay. the first upfront costs are set out and first year's right. um, payment and then from, from year two it's 200 and whatever. Yeah. Um, Oh, 200 and somewhere, you said 200. 202. 202, to be precise. And if we wanted to plan, it's 142. Yeah. In on addition. top of that. Yeah, on top of that. But to be honest with you, let's see how we get on with the finance. Mm. And if that works and we're happy with that, then let's, we can always extend it. Well, rather than wait for another month, I mean, it seems to me that, that you've done the research. Mm. And I can't see a reason for, for, for waiting for another month. Well, on the basis of the figures that you've just given us, a good idea to get on. Mm -hmm. Find out about when the training courses go, yeah. and who goes on it, and when it can I mean, take we, place and all sorts of things. We have been deliberating about changing to a more, um, you know, more updated formula for about five years. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, David. And you know, I suppose it's been 
And this, of course, comes into line with our internet banking process as well. So we're going to go internet banking from uh, April. And this is a fair bit of uh, changing over, really, but I think it'll be worthwhile in the long run. No, I'm, I'm, I'm in your hands, really. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. 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 Everyone seems to be of the opinion that um, we should uh, consider this. Can I have a proposer? The seconder? Okay. And can I show of hands? Okay. Right, is that one? And, I think and the internet? The internet bank rules the same. At the moment, because the internet banking takes a bit of time to set up, I've set it up with Colin, myself and Bob, uh, just to sort of almost experiment, see how it works. So. You know, because obviously it's going to be a new thing for us. Once we've done that, there's no one stop us opening up mm -hmm. and, and everybody being able to assess the payments and make the payments. The way it would work is that we would agree, as we have done today, payments for the, for the, for the month. Um, and then I would go in the following day and make the payments. And then two people then would need to go in with a password or a code that would then authorise that payment. That's, I believe, how it works. Google but, has three signatures. Well, I think we'll do, yes, we've got That's three. Right. So I'm, I'm there as well. So, but I don't like to authorise my own payments. But well, we ought to get the, the idea. We ought to get the finance committee involved. Yeah, in that. I think so. I think so. There's just four of us. So that's the only thing I want to say on the internet bank yet. So that's where we are. Well, we move on to matters <coughs> for consideration. And the first item is to, to consider the council media changes, options, pre-circulated paper. Um, with the minutes and the notes sent out uh, before this meeting, yeah. including a document, draft communication, this one here. Which was, which was calling the document. Yeah. Okay. I did read this. Um, now, the, this was um, formulated by uh, yeah. Councillor Sturgis, and this is up for uh, discussion, not a decision. Um, so, if I go around the table and ask if anyone has anything they wish to raise about this, um, I'll start with John. Yeah, OK. Um, fine. Well, it's a very useful document, I think, David. Um, if we're going to go forward, and what we need to do is to set up a policy, um, and to do this, my suggestion would be that we ought to have a subcommittee of okay, two or three people, certainly including David, to sit, sort the policy out, come back and make a firm proposal to the council, maybe at the next meeting. I mean, it's all in there, but we just need to get the policy right. So um, we should uh, form a group to formulate the policy. Oh, we, we, we can't formulate a policy sitting around this table with too many people, but I think we have about three or four people that would be the way to go forward. But the ultimate decision lies with, with the parish council. With the parish council. Yes. The, the subcommittee who decide what we're going to do produces the proposal and the um, council approves it, or not, as the case may be. But the same way of taking or a project. You get a project, project manager, let it get sorted, bring it back, and let it be approved. Thank you. Andrea? Um, I would like to uh, support the uh, the plan that's being put on the table because I believe that um, we don't have many people to attend our meetings. Um, when you look at the viewing figures on YouTube, not many people, it's probably just us and a couple that actually do take the time to, to see what we're doing. Yeah, And I, I believe that if we have um, a communication document that where we can actually put information on different platforms and, and sort of go with the times a little bit more, you know, by mm. using Nextdoor, by maybe setting up a Facebook page, you know, by using the BKM in a more positive way than just writing the minutes of the meeting. I think that 
you know, maybe we could sort of drum up a bit of interest. And I think that, you know, with the speed awareness, you know, how people have got a grip to that and have had a coffee morning. And if we could actually get the ball rolling and get more people involved, I'm sure that you know, like life for us would be an awful lot easier. And it would be, you know, less challenging because you're, you're trying to... You're trying to think what people want as a representation, but you're sat here, you know, and you you, you don't really know. It might be just thought that you just a, a cluster of people's um, opinions. So I, I I like the idea, and and I would like to be part of the um, of that committee because yeah. I, I believe that it, it would be a valuable um, document for us to move forward as a council. And okay. thank you very much, Thanks. David, for putting it together and getting us. <laughs> Um, I agree with um, God. <laughs> what? He's forgotten. Ooh, yeah, no, 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 no. I was going to say I agree with uh, Councillor Harper. It was a good idea <laughs> no, to create uh, some form of sub um, steering group that actually would go through the good paper that Councillor Stewart is constructing and actually pull together all the salient points out of that for us as a whole council to then vote on certain parts of the media policy um, because you, you can't go through the whole document in a whole you know, session. So no. I, I agree with that and I also agree uh, with Councillor Hurricane. Um, <laughs> 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 you know, um, we, we, we do need to embrace uh, times, we do need to embrace social media mm -hmm. I also think that the uh, Brent Knoll website should have some form of elements from, um, you know, uh, snippets from our meetings, etc. I've noticed the pictures are missing of me, um, uh, Councillor. Um, they're not done. If you go, I looked on there today, um, and it's. You know, Bob, Bob looks the same from the early days all the way through. You can see Bob all the way through. Um, you know, etc. Everyone's on there, but there's three. There's three uh, names: me, um, you, and uh, and Nigel. They've got no imagery on there, which I think's pretty poor, um, considering we tried. To, we tried to, yeah, but we tried to get a group photo as well and failed. Um, so I think we need to address that as well as part of our media policy. Um, you've also had your duty come this month, haven't you? But unfortunately, because there were, there were a couple missing, we decided it wasn't really worth doing it. But, but it's, it's just it's a whole media and, and our persona to the community, isn't it? Yeah, so I agree. Right, thank you. Brian? Uh, just a few specific observations. I wrote to David about it, it earlier on. Thank you. And um, uh, some, good, some very good ideas in it. I will make a comment about the surgeries um, because I personally think we should continue with them even if we don't get anybody. The chances come, the, the uh, opportunity for people to attend is there. If we cancel them, yeah. we be accused again of, oh, there's no communication. Yeah, no and uh, then we must be available in that sense. I'm happy to come to everyone if I'm here. If I'm in if living, if I'm not on holiday, for instance, as it's not very far away. Um, as regards the website, um, I've told you about how it's set up. I think it could the co content of it should be reviewed perhaps once every two, three years, or once mm -hmm. every council session, so mm -hmm. we can update it. Um, I think my photograph on there shows me with my moustache dark. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the idea of using next door is good, but we must be very careful and selective what we put on it, uh, because it could be easily misinterpreted. So it needs, as you said, a small group to uh, discuss that. Uh, also, I suggested that we had a photograph of each councillor plus a little pen picture of them put in the Bradnall News because so many people in the village don't know who we are, really. Yeah. So if they had a little blurb about each person, that would be that would be quite a good idea. Would that be permissible to the editor? 
<laughs> yeah, it might damage my circulation figures, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah not a problem. Well, we won't, we won't put yours on. Especially <laughs> if that was taken down at some uh, middle lane or something. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> the other thing about communication, several times I've suggested in the past that we have a meet the councillors morning, and I think yeah. we mentioned that at the last meeting, yeah. and I think yeah. that's important, and so, it should be well advertised, yeah. all part of uh, improving communication. Um, and uh, that's about all I have to say, but of course it is a, a plan, not a policy document, so it's something we can discuss mm -hmm. at the next meeting in, in more detail. But I like the idea of the, the subgroup. Yeah. Do you want to be part of it? Do I? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, see what the, we see what the couch in there, we? See what the couch is there. Yeah. <laughs> David? Um, no, I, I stand by my paper, really. Right. <laughs> David? Oh, I'm pretty happy with everything that everyone else has said. I don't think I need to go on anymore. I think collectively everyone's pulling this together in the right sort of direction. So I think a subcommittee would be the way forward. So I'm happy. Thank you. Bob? Yeah, equally, I think others have said everything that I was going to say anyway. The only, the only other comment I was going to make the slight concern I would have, and, and I mentioned it last time we discussed it, is ultimately my envy would be is that the proper officer of the council is is the clerk, and so I think we can come up with press releases and stuff, but ultimately that has it to it, it should go through the clerk yes. um, sure. because that's that's the authorised person from the council to give council views, but. I'm very happy for it to go with the working party and for them to, to come up yeah, with the I, I, I would say I do think the clerk should be the moderator on the yes. forum anyway, whatever, so that, you know, this this anything comes directly from the council, it's the council's views, Collect it's collectively, it's worded properly and then it's released and we all agree yeah. what's going to be released and it, before it goes. He uh, is ultimately a uh, spokesman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, he is independent yeah. from that. That's one. true. In some, to some extent, that's true. Although, if it was a question of. You have to be very careful, because yes, I am the proper officer of the council, but actually, the chairman is often the person who is asked questions by, for example, the press. The press very often will phone the chairman, not the clerk, which is right, because the chairman has been part of the decision. The clerk hasn't. So I think from that point of view, it's a joint, it's almost joint between the chairman and, yeah. uh, and the clerk in some ways. But ultimately, somebody has to send the, the actual information. Yeah. And we, we don't want to increase your work, though, do we? Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, just, keep, just keep buying it on. And okay. just one more thing, yes. just a word of warning, no matter how good we think we produce a communication document and involve the village, there'll always be somebody who will criticise yeah. how there's no communication, but yeah. you've just got to get used to that. Yeah. It's also fair to say, I think, and from a class building, because we, one of our class meetings, we had quite a big discussion about this, and actually there is no doubt we do more than many parish councils do. Really? For example, I'll give you one example of that, agendas and minutes go to over 40 people in this village. No other council does that. No other council has um, a public list of people that they send out their minutes and, uh, and agendas to. And we are okay under GDPR? Yes, right? every one of those okay. has been asked whether they really? are prepared to accept uh, that information, and, and, and of course they are. But So in addition to our website, and in addition to the BKN, in addition to notice boards, um, we do have this extra bit of communication, which we, which we do, and, you know, to be honest with you, I do it simply to advise people that we what we do. Yeah. You know. So there's a little extra that we do do that some many councils don't. So uh, is it your the council's um, considered opinion to set up a, a subcommittee tonight? Ooh. We have various people been suggested. Um, we Jim, have Jim will have to be there. Actually. Yes. Yeah. Jim will have to be there. Because he has to be involved. Yes. And who were those people <coughs> that showed? So it's John. That's cool. 
Brian, take a photo of David. David, Andrew. Yeah, Andrew. Yeah. <coughs> so it's basically the chairman, John, Brian, awesome. Brian, David, and Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> the full committee. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, thank you for that. Would you rather it be for? I might think, go on then. It doesn't matter. Is it? I think it that. needs to be impartial, and um, it's not down to one or two or three, and the no, more the people that are involved. Be 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 <laughs> 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 Gee, I don't know if take a vote on that. Can I have a vote that those members are accepted? Thank you. Fools. <laughs> The question, I suppose, is when you want to have your meeting. I mean, well, that's the one thing Colin probably asked me about. What would you be good to meet? Is so, Colin just flying out or just flying back? Uh, he's coming. He's coming back. I think later on this week. So he's away for you know probably meeting two. friends. I think he's away for three days. He's oh. going on Thursday. He'll be back next week. Well, he's flying out today because it was yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Today, yeah. but he's not going to be here this week. Do you want to leave it to the yeah, general meeting week. before you set a date? Or do you want to do it before then? I'll do it by email between them. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Absolutely. I would suggest that when Colin comes back, he sets a date that was all for, for all of us. Yeah. And where we can just have a tick list and then meet up and wherever. I'd like to put forward that it's either first thing in the morning or last thing at night, not the middle of the day, not, not two yeah. o'clock. Do it by 7.30 in the morning. You can do 7.30, I'll be ready. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pop round your bed. Thank you, Grandma. The next item I think we've considered uh, or covered, speed mitigation measures, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, battery lane posts and gates installation. We've already... The next item is village green fencing issues. Yeah, I'll just have a quick one about that. Um, we talked about it before. Uh, we had a meeting with the riparian owners on the right hand side of the green. Uh, Colin was there, Brian was there, I was there. Uh, Give them an idea for what we had a quote for and I'm waiting for a, a new, um, I want this quote updated because it's about two months ago, but it'll be much the same. Um, and when we looked at the right hand side of the green, we were going to replace the chain fencing with the new metal fence up to where the, uh, the hedge started. Well, having looked at that, we are going to get a quote to get the whole lot done. So there will be a new quote. If we go by the old quote, uh, VAT3, we're talking just under three and a half thousand pounds to do the whole lot. The left hand side to replace the chain link fence. Uh, all the posts are all right. I have spoken to Mr. Slocum. Uh, who owns the house next door? His his fence is falling to pieces. He had a word with me. What he wants to do is to pop his fence up with some decent concrete posts. And he asked if he could liaise with us so he can put his posts in when we do replacement posts. There's no problem about that. Nothing's going to happen until the new year. I will liaise with him and do that. And I've actually asked him if he would take some steps to try and contain the bamboo, which is getting worse and worse. You can do it, actually, because I had bamboo in my garden, and I looked it up online, and you can get, um, and I bought um, a plastic strip by two, three feet deep, which I, you dig a trench, put it in there, it does contain it. It works very well. So I think we need to try and get him to do that. But that will be the left-hand side of the green, and that's going to cost about £790. On the right-hand side of the green, we've had certain discussions with Jed and Jim, who lives next door, who then they spoke to... O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll. I don't know what O'Driscoll's view is. 
if we go right the way to the end of the groove, that hedge has got to go, and so it will open up his garden completely. I've spoken to Colin about it. Colin is very much of the idea that if we're going to do it, we want to get it. It's our green. We we put the uh, put the metal fence right way through. Clearly, we need to speak to the riparian owners. As soon as we get, uh, Colin gets back, Brian and that, we will sit down with the riparian owners and agree exactly with what we're going to do with them. Jim, who lives in the middle. Uh, he was talking about the slight erosion of the bank on mm. our side of the green, and he suggested that he would like it propped up and revetted. David says it's about 10 minutes <coughs> we've found out about it from Tuckerless, that's right. Um, Jim would give us part payment. I slightly question the need to do it, because if we... Um, Revet it, then we've got to backfill it. And one of the temptations I think will be is that the owners, the riparian owners, perhaps may creep across the reed and start planting on our on, on our side. And I've got to be bloody careful about that because we're going to put up a sort of nearly two metre fence, one for one, one point eight metre high. We can't maintain it. We will not be able to maintain it. But what we will need to do, and this is the final thing I would say, is that if we put the new fence up, which we will do, uh, it needs to have, and it needs to be included in the uh, finishing contract, that that area is sprayed because we mustn't let the saplings, the thistles and everything else start growing up in a really rather smart fence. It won't put it to pieces in the same way as it will be changing fence species, but we need to be fairly careful, but we need just to talk very carefully to riparian owners, and I would suggest we do that come a fine day, in the new year, but we're looking at about four grand to do the whole thing, if we do it all. And I am waiting because that quote I had, and I can give you the date and the year, I don't know when was it, was in October. Um, I had the girl back, <coughs> she's the estimator, she was in last week, she's going to update that, see that we're up to date on that, and we'll give a quote for the whole lot. So we'll have, we'll have chapter and verse by the next meeting. Okay. Well, uh, one thing I was going to mention, are we allowed to spray weed killers and pesticides next to a water course? Yeah, if you use the right stuff. You get rid of some you've stuff. got someone that's allowed mm. to do it. Good, thanks so much. Um, is this fence ours totally? Hmm? We own the fence. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We own the fence. So there wouldn't be any contribution from any of the neighbours. No, nothing to do with it. No, no, no. It's just that Jim, who is in the middle, uh, he came to a little meeting and said, "Well, I think that we ought to do this, and I think we ought to prop your bank up a bit, stop it eroding." One of the things which we must not do, according to Matthew Wall, is dredge the rim. It's quite deep enough anyway. I actually question the need to prevent the bank because if you're not going to if you're not going to dig down, it's not going to fall away anymore. No. So we just need to be fairly careful, and we also need to be fairly careful about the riparian nodes coming over and perhaps <coughs> planting some sort of screen on our bank, which we then cannot manage because we can't actually get at it. But if it's sprayed, then uh, that will. Yeah. If it's sprayed, then that will deter anything. Well, not really, because you just spray. So, I mean, if this is the fence. You just spray very close. I mean, it's rather like going around the um, the yard or rather the, the car park. I mean, it's very directional the spray. You will spray a hell of a lot. The only final thing to say, and Colin has actually spoken to Matthew Wall, and that is that the reed goes back and around and comes out by the tennis court, and as it goes down through there, the person who owns that house has piped the, culverted the reed about 17 metres, and it doesn't flow. Uh, and that is one of the reasons why there's a back of water. Drainage board know about it. Drainage board can and will take action. And Colin wrote to him within the last fortnight and 
Matthew Wall said, it is on our list, and Colin actually from the parish council said, well, if you clear it, we will make a contribution when we know what we're talking about. So that, I think it's all in hand. Um, and I, we will go to Premier Fencing, uh, who are excellent. They did the metal fencing behind the mugger. I had two other people who were hearing quotes absolutely bloody useless and a complete waste of time. And that, I think, is quite reasonable. So I think we could play with that. And Colin reckons that, yeah, that's a pretty good ballpark figure, and we will, we will have the money to do it. So if we're looking for about four grand, something like that. Can I, can I ask a question? I'm going to probably answer this. Which side of the ring needs to be accessed by the drainage board? Um, neither of that as an issue, but they would always look to use the easiest route. Which is the... Uh, be the green. Yeah, well then that would then raise an issue that if we stick too near high fencing, we're then stopping access to the ring. So have, if we put the fencing up, can I table that it's something that can be either removable for access to the ring, if that was because otherwise there's no access to the ring from the green at all? Well, well certainly it's the, the, the uh, metal fence, well, unless you don't screw it. I would ask the drainage board the question because they do have a lot of paperwork and forms for stuff within so many metres of the yeah. ring being done, because that's very true. If we put that up, then we're the tech, we're sort of... But he said under no circumstances must it be dredged. Under no circumstances. Steve, I was only going to say, in terms of the fence that went behind the mugger, on there it's got like all those like allen key things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I think you can yeah, take yeah. off the... Yeah. You, you can't move the posts, but you right. could get in between them yeah, that's if right. we needed to. That would be perfect. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I just raised yeah. that yeah. because yeah. The, the, the drainage board yeah. would have something to say about it if they can get in access. No, you're quite right, I think. No, unlike chain link fencing, that is what's right. Yeah. You can actually yeah. remove the... the, the but they come in great panels. Do, do you think it would be because of the... Uh, what is the name? Um, the transparency that we ought to have two more quotes to compare it with? You know, I know that we're not we're, too certain who we're, was we're, a decent people to go. I mean, I can go back to the two companies. I go back to Ian Morgan and Ian, Ian, Ian. Just, well, I'll ask, I'll ask the two of them to update a quote. Mm -hmm. But they were just so bloody lazy. And Ian Morgan never actually gave it. Never. And he came in with all around. <coughs> but it is too much. I suppose if you've asked the question, though, if we've actually gone to have three quotes, and only two have re replied, I mean, at least... We, as a council, have done our bit. Yeah. I mean, I, I am perfectly happy. It's only a telephone call. I will ask them to update what they said. And if they come back, they come back. And I'll recall the fact that I've asked them. Yeah. Yeah. No, but the only efficient practice. people are... And they've done a lot. And actually, in Morgan's done work on this screen too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. I don't think you wanted the work. Right. I'd like to thank John for all the hard work he's done on that. I'll take it forward. Um, I'll give you a bit of an update. Goom, goom, the new year. Fox and Goose safety concern? Covered. Pardon? Covered under the highways. Yes. Um, move on to health and safety policy. Health and safety. Well, Nigel was doing that, and I. I thought he'd be here, I thought he might just want to update us, but again, he's not here, so we'll just come back in January. Yeah. Okay. Good to have you. And that is a report, John. Nothing, thank you. Nothing for me, thank you. And, uh, Brian? Uh, yeah, just one or two things. I've got the daffodil bulbs at the back of my mm -hmm. cardboard. Do I remind you that if you want to get any, come and bring your own bag and put them somewhere around the village of your choice. Also, we mentioned uh, varnishing, sanding down and varnishing the sh bench outside the shop because it looks pretty mm -hmm. grim. Mm -hmm. I wonder if anything's been done about that yet. Um, um, I think we need chase to it up. What's his name on that? Andy Selwyn. Andy thank you. Um, I did draw up an improving the village document in the annual meeting. Mm -hmm. I think I'd like to put that on the agenda mm -hmm. next time, please. So, beautifying the village? Yeah. And, uh, 
in the councillors. 